So we have now this linear layout at the bottom, which shows information about the current game. And we have this empty recycler view, which takes up all the remaining space. Our goal for this part is to fill up that recycler view with a grid of icons, which will, which will eventually be each memory card that you can tap on and flip over. But for now, we're just going to put in some dummy icon. And the interesting thing here is that the size of each of these cards that you're seeing are not hard coded. Instead, we're going to dynamically set the width and height according to how much space we have. So on a larger phone or on a tablet, these will appear bigger. On a smaller phone, we're going to reduce the size appropriately. We're going to make them just large enough that we can fill up the entire space that we're given in this recycler view. All right, so jumping back into the code, every recycler view has two core components. One is the adapter and one is the layout manager. Given some views that should be shown in the recycler view, the layout manager is responsible for measuring and positioning those items. So the layout manager is actually quite simple for us. We're going to use a predefined layout manager that comes with Android called the grid layout manager. And this is how we're going to have this nice grid effect. So this takes in two parameters, one which is a context. So we're passing in this, which is referencing the main activity, because the main activity is an example of a context. And the second parameter here is the span count otherwise known as how many columns are in your recycler view. So for now, we're going to hard code this four by two grid. So there's going to be two columns and each column is going to have four rows. We're going to pass in two here. And then later on, we're going to have to make this dynamic based on what the user has picked. The other component that we're going to define for the recycler view is an adapter. The adapter is more involved than the layout manager because it's responsible for taking in the underlying data set of the recycler view and turning that into or adapting each piece of data into a view. I'm going to set this adapter property on the recycler view, and we're going to define a new class which has all the logic for the adapter called memory board adapter. And this will take in two parameters, one which is the context, so I'm going to pass in this, and second will be how many elements total are in our grid. And we're going to hard code this in as eight for now, and we'll change that later on. Before we define this memory board adapter, there's one more thing that I want to point out, which is optional, but it's a performance optimization, which is that there's a method on the recycler view called set has fixed size. And we're going to pass in true here. And what this method does, if you look at the documentation, is that we know the size of the recycler view is not affected by the adapter contents. So like we talked about earlier, the size of the recycler view on the screen is always going to be defined as soon as the app boots up. And it won't change regardless of how many memory cards are inside the recycler view. And so by setting has fixed size to be true, uh, we can make our application a bit more efficient. Okay, so now let's go back and you can see how Android Studio is complaining that this class isn't defined. So let's have Android Studio help us to define this class. So tap on the red light bulb and tap on create class memory board adapter and we're going to extract this out into a separate file in the same package name. Okay, so the first parameter is going to actually be a context, not an activity. And the second constructor parameter will be num pieces, representing how many memory cards there are, and that will be an integer. And then hit tab one more time. Uh, one thing I want to do is I want to prefix each of these constructor parameters with private val, and that will actually allow us to use this in the body of our class. What we have here is a class memory board adapter, which is a subclass of the recycler view adapter class. And you'll notice that this is parameterized by something called recycler view dot view holder. So a view holder is an object which provides access to all the views of one recycler view element. And so in our case, that will represent one memory piece or one memory card in the game. And we're going to define our own view holder, which will encapsulate that memory card view. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually define an inner class here called view holder. And this is going to inherit from the recycler view view holder. I hit this red light bulb and then we need to match the constructor invocation of the view holder. And now that we've defined this view holder, instead of being parameterized by the base class, I want to be parameterized by this inner class that we just defined. So we'll need to import that. Okay, and now that we've defined the inner class and we're parameterized by that, now hit this red light bulb that Android Studio is complaining about for the memory board adapter, 
and implement the members. The Recycler View Adapter class is an abstract class, which means that we have several methods that we need to override in order for it to function. And there are three that we need to override. I'm going to select all three and tap on OK. And my preference is to have the inner class show up at the bottom of the class. So I'm going to have that, I'm going to move that down here. And now there are three methods here. On create view holder is responsible for figuring out how to create one view of our recycler view. Get item count is actually really easy. So I'm going to define that right now, which is how many elements are in our recycler view. And that will simply be the constructor parameter that we passed in, num pieces. And then on bind view holder is responsible for taking the data, which is at this position, and binding it to this view holder, which is passed in here. So we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit. But first, let's define the onCreateViewHolder method. So the pattern here typically is we're going to use the layout inflator. We're going to uh, create it from the context, which is the parameter that we passed into the constructor. And we're going to inflate a resource file, which defines our layout. And with the r.layout.memory underscore card. And this takes in two more parameters, one which is the view group, the root view group, and that'll be the parent, which is the parameter passed in. And then the third parameter is attached to root. We're going to pass in false here. We have to now define this layout file. Again, Android Studio will help us with this. Create layout resource file. Have the root element of this be a linear layout. Tap on OK. The objective here is to add in some children elements on this linear layout such that we create the view for one individual memory card in our game. So if I go into the design tab, what we'll do is um, first off, let's change the height of this linear layout to be wrap content. Let's drag in a card view. And inside the card view will be an image button. We'll drag out an image button and let's have the underlying drawable or icon behind that image button be this IC launcher background, which is this green grid. You should have that already from the default Android Studio project. Tap on OK. Let's have the ID simply be image button and have the width and height be match parent. Now you can see how it takes up the full dimensions of the card view, which is the parent. Um, let's set the background to be white. There's a solid white color and the scale type can be center crop. Cool. And the card view represents one actual memory card. So there's a couple design tweaks I want to do here. First off, I want to hard code the width and height to be 120 dp, just to give it a more realistic feel of what a memory card might actually look like. We're, we're going to change this to be dynamically measured later on. But for now, 120 is a pretty good default. Let's change the card corner radius and height to be 8 dp. So it stands out a bit more. And let's also give this an ID of card view. Finally, the last thing I want to do is set the gravity of this parent linear layout to be center so that this card view goes into the center of the screen. So search for gravity and then hit center. All right, awesome. So you can see how we're now aligned to the center of the screen. So going back into the memory board adapter, now this error went away. And the return value of layout inflator inflate will be the actual view which was created. I'll say val view. And then what we want to return here is the view wrapped inside of a view holder. And then in on bind view holder, what I want to do is for now just call holder.bind position. And bind is something which is not yet defined because Android Studio is looking for this method to be defined on the view holder class. It doesn't exist yet. So Android Studio will help us to create it. And for now, this is going to be a no op. And then later on, we'll, we'll come back and address this. Okay, let's run the app and see what happens. Awesome. So what you can see here is we are now getting eight different elements in our recycler view in this grid, four by two grid. And you can kind of see the outlines of the different cards that we've laid out. So what you can see here is that we're not really making a good use of all the space that we've allocated for the recycler view, right? Like we have this kind of awkward white space at the bottom. And also we want to ideally have some margin between each of the memory cards in our recycler view. So let's figure out how to do that. The first thing that's worth pointing out 
is that the space allocated for each memory card will depend on how many memory cards we have. So right now we have this four by two grid, which means we have two cards across and four cards tall. On the other hand, if we have a slightly larger board where we have three cards across and four cards tall, now we have 12 cards instead of eight. That means that the amount of width allocated for each memory card is going to shrink. So let's implement that first. Going back into the code, we need to measure what is the width and height of the recycler view, which is containing all the memory cards. And based on that, change the width of our card view. So instead of having this be hard coded to be 120 DP, we want to measure that according to the recycler view width and height. And that turns out not to be that difficult because the recycler view is actually the parent, which is passed in here. So if we wanted to figure out what is the width of the card, so I'll say val card width, then that will be the parent dot the width divided by however many columns we have in our grid. So in this example, because we're hard coding is four by two grid, the width will be divided by two. And then similarly for the card height, we have four cards tall. So we're gonna div divide the height of the recycler view by four. And we're gonna mandate that each memory card in our game is gonna be square. So we're gonna take the smaller of the card width or card height. So I'll call it card side length. And that's gonna be the minimum of card width and card height. And you might have to import min, which is coming from kotlin.math.min at the top here. So now we need to actually grab out the card view from the view that we've inflated and set the width and height of that card view to be card side length. The way we do that is we say view.findViewById, pull out the card view, which we gave it an ID of card view. And we're gonna get a reference to the layout params and this is going to be equal to layout params, a variable that we define. And on these layout params, this is what will allow us to change the width and height. The width will be card side length and the height will also be card side length. So let's try this one more time. And hopefully now we shouldn't have this awkward white space at the bottom. And you can see that that is fixed, right? So we are actually taking up the whole screen width and screen height. There's one more observation I wanna make, which is that we don't actually want the card to take up the full dimensions of the space we allocate to it. So for example, if we're putting a memory card into this yellow square, we want to have some margin between the actual icon and the space around it. And the reason we want that is because if there's a neighboring card, we want to have some white space in between the two. And so that's the next thing I want to implement with you, which is how do we add some margin so that we're not always flush with the card next to us. And this also turns out not to be that difficult. We're going to define a constant, which is the margin size. I'm going to define that in a companion object. In Kotlin, companion objects are singletons where we'll define constants. We can access its members directly through the containing class. Think of companion objects similar to static variables in Java. Let's define a constant called margin size, and I'll set that equal to 10. That's what I found to be a reasonable distance between each memory card. So the card width, we actually want it to be reduced by the amount of margin on either side, to the right and left. And so I'm gonna subtract two times the margin size. And similarly, we want to reduce the maximum allowable card height by the margin on the top and bottom. So we'll subtract two times the margin size again. Now we're measuring the dimensions of the card, taking into account the margin, but we actually need to set it when we grab the card view reference from the view. We have to cast the layout params as a special type of layout params called margin layout params. And once we've done that, now we should be able to set the margin on the layout params. So I'll say set margins, and we're gonna set the margin size all around on all four sides. Let's try it. That's so much better. Now we have this nice white space margin between each memory card. One quick improvement I'd like to make here is adding some margin on the recycler view as a whole at the top and bottom. So going back into activity main, I'm gonna add a 8dp margin to the top and bottom. And let's just see if that looks a little bit better now. Great, I like that a lot more because it gives us some breathing room between the memory cards and the underlying parent view. 
right now, when I tap on any of these elements, nothing actually happens. To wrap up this segment, I would like to actually register a click listener on each image button, which is what these are. So going back into the memory board adapter, inside of the view holder, when we bind the view holder, we're going to gra grab a reference to the image button, which is inside that card view. So the way we can do this is in the constructor of the view holder, I'm going to define the image button. So the ID we gave it was image button. And so here we want to actually set the image button click listener. I'm going to add a log statement here. Clicked on position and then let's print out the position. So we need to define this tag, which we'll do in the companion object. And the convention that I use is the tag name is always the class name. So in this case, the class name is memory board adapter. And let's try this one more time. So we're gonna run the application and also open up logcat. So I am going to filter out only for info level logs because we actually have this at info level. And I'm also going to look for logs from memory board adapter. So I started typing in memory. And now if we tap on an element, you can see, okay, we do see clicked on position zero. If I go down here, that's position two, position four, and this last one is position seven, which makes sense because we have eight cards from position zero to position seven. Just one more thing before, before we wrap up this segment. If you notice, if we go to the ends of the recycler view and, and scroll up or down, we get these shadows, which are the material design way of indicating that we're at the end of this recycler view. There's no more content. In our app, it doesn't really make that much sense because we are mandating or guaranteeing that the content of the recycler view will be fit to the screen dimension. Because the content is never scrollable, we should never be seeing this visual indicator called edge effect. And so if we go back into activity main and then go to the recycler view and then search for this attribute called over scroll mode and set that to never that should address that issue. So if we read on the app, now when I scroll up or down, you can see that there is no shadow. The goal for the next part is to introduce the notion of a board size so we don't have to keep hard coding in a four by two grid. And we'll create some icons that the user will eventually pair up as part of the memory game. So if you're enjoying this, don't forget to like and subscribe so you get notified when the next part comes out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.